Hello once again, and welcome back to another masterful production plagiarized by your host, Lance Renard. In today's haphazard production by the long-lost Lance Renard, he's going to be covering some of the details in a third-party position, as Mr. Renard does, to obscure and obfuscate the fact that it is he who's actually speaking. Uh, this is uh, some of the details that I'll be covering here in the, uh, you know, what I don't know. I like to find out what I don't know. And so very often in my productions, I am fumbling, bumbling, and stumbling to, uh, you know, because I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm finding out what I'm talking about. Now, hello once again. Welcome back to another investigative report from Lance Renard in different multiple voices. Um, actually, I'm just playing it by ear, floating off the wind, and like a feather in the wind will land where I do land. In this particular production, we're going to be talking about the last, once again, of my productions. Well, not really the last of my productions, but I'm going to be a little more footwork. I'm heading out. I'm heading out to the mountains. I'm going to be investigating and working with this type of um, detail. And all of the processing ends of it, from fabrics and lotions, topicals and fuels, lubricants, and uh, the machinery that's being made to process all of the different types of uh, elements and items that can be created from this article. And so, I think that we all should be interested in this particular detail, because every one of us, I mean, considering it's an eight trillion dollar industry coming into America at this point and these yahoos then decided they would crush it down and keep it illegal so the oligarchies could have their profits that time is ending and the, well their oligarchies will still have their profits but the, it'll be spread out a bit more amongst the people that are creating the inventions to process these things and so it's, um, it's an ever-growing industry at this point. I believe that uh, the more people that take part of it, that uh, start um, innovating from the plastics, lubricants, fuels, and uh, other chemicals that can be created and items that can be created from this particular plant, um, should be investigated and exposed. There's so much I don't know, and I'm about to find out, and I'm going to convey those findings on this channel so why not you gotta have fun with it and I can't just do that by sitting here at a computer staring at a screen and clicking away and babbling I've got to get my ass out there on the road in the mountain and uh, tilling the soil and creating the units and dealing with the industry and that's what I'm about to do so enjoy the upcoming productions they're going to be uh, pretty cool because I'm gonna be out there with a camera or my just my phone even on the way, I'm going to take some videos. I'll be taking off here within about two weeks. So, enjoy the upcoming haphazard information. If any of you know all of the different machines used to process uh, for clothing, in this particular article I'm showing here, um, and if you know the changing laws that are occurring with this particular article here, um, the details that I'm going to go through, and, and the first things that I start looking at are the details that I go through in most of my productions. And in this, I noticed um, this house panel approves, and sorry, the Moore Act has no chance of becoming law. And, you know, I see some negative dissension in, in concerning the uh, positive, uh, positive and uplifting details of changing the laws to a, a more usable nature for our people. And if you look here, uh, where my cursor is, seven days ago legalization, um, I noticed inhibits research here. Um, restrictive federal classification inhibits research. Well, wouldn't you want to know everything you, you could know about a particular item? Inhibiting research is just, really? Okay, that's a little nuts, guys. Um, let's uh, kind of focus on that, anyone in like the Senate position, you know, in your little actor's position. So, I'm not here to necessarily focus on the negative. 
But viewing what the facts are is, is part of the, you know, science itself, taking a look at the facts. And so I'm going to be approaching this, um, actually devoting my life to learning all about it and uh, offering information that can give you tremendous amounts of potential to create a great future for yourself and your families and children at addendum. And so these uh, details on what the difference is between hemp and marijuana are curious details. And a lot of people know about them, but a lot of people don't, like myself. I have a, a relatively general rough idea, but would like to know a little bit more. My general rough idea is that uh, the difference between cannabis and or, or hemp and marijuana is that hemp doesn't have the THC content that uh, marijuana does. And my um, that's a genetic detail from the seed itself. And so you could argue that in any hemp field, there are going to be some that have a certain volume of THC in them. It depends on your seed, of course. Welcome back to another exposition of hemp versus marijuana. Brought to you by 20 Mule Team Borax. I'm your host, Walter Cronkite. The difference between hemp versus marijuana is all too often improperly explained. As we go into dark screen and examine the differences between hemp and... All right, I'm done talking like that. I'm just opening up this page and uh, incessantly babbling as it takes its 20 minutes to appear. The hemp versus marijuana difference update explained. Sign in as Haphazard's Universe. Lance Renard. Boop, boop, boop. Hemp versus marijuana. The difference explained. And so here we have. Uh, please note that this article is republished from our website, cbdoorigin.com. And so if you want to go to that website, I think it would be fantastic. But the difference between hemp versus marijuana is subject to uh, far too often improperly explained. Lance. And demand for CBD continues to skyrocket. The CBD industry has developed into a unique market that is independent yet still closely related to the cannabis industry, including its controversial reputation and shifting legalities. Due to the confusion and complications that this can present for CBD users, it has become increasingly important to understand the difference between hemp and marijuana and how they relate to cannabis. What's the difference between hemp versus marijuana, sativa, indica, and ruderalis? Cannabis is a genus of flowering plants in the Cannabacea family, and which consists of three primary species, cannabis sativa, cannabis indica, and cannabis ruderalis. While hemp and marijuana are regularly referred to as species or strains of cannabis, they actually do not qualify as either one. In fact, they couldn't technically be considered as plants at all. Hmm. Hemp and marijuana are simply broadcast classifications of cannabis that were adopted into our culture. However, they are not legitimate nomenclature for the cannabis plant. To clarify the difference between hemp and marijuana and clear the smoke, as it were, on this frequently misinformed subject, let's explore what each of those terms actually means and how they can relate to cannabis. Hemp is a term used to classify varieties of cam cannabis that contain 0.3 or less THC content, thus verifying my thoughts. Hemp has a, okay, content by dry weight, less than 3%, 0.3 or yeah, less. All right, so while the legal definition described above had not been legitimized until the Agricultural Act of 2018 had passed hemp, has generally been used to describe the non-toxicating cannabis that is harvested for the industrial use of its derived products, which, um, with evidence of its use recorded throughout history, including the discovery of material made from hemp over 10,000 years ago, many believe that hemp was the first crop ever cultivated by mankind. 
with the capabilities to produce uh, crucial resources such as food, rope, clothing, paper, housing material, and more, hemp has been a catalyst for man's earliest innovations. Hemp is the strongest natural fiber in the world. It is known to have over 50,000 different uses. And so for me to cover each and every single one of those uses and all of the machine and fabrication production uh, products that are being created to make these, uh, and uh, it's just fascinating and multi-complex. I hope that this particular episode gives you some information about this, at least, that you didn't know already. What is Medijuana? Medijuana is a term used to classify varieties of cannabis that contain more than 0.3% THC by dry weight. And so, as I mentioned earlier in the video, or will mention coming up, um, this is an inadvertent situation where the occasional seed uh, can ruin a grower's crop uh, because of the fact that it's checked and tested and found to have some uh, content and thus decimating a man's work for the year. So while the use of this term is widespread throughout American culture, it presents a grossly inadequate misrepresentation of cannabis. Most informed individuals and organizations in the cannabis industry refuse to use the term and some consider it to be racist. All right. So what amount is psychotropic? And so in the early American history, the term marijuana was non-existent and cannabis was the primary term used to classify the plant. Between 1910 and 1920, nearly a million Mexicans migrated into the United States seeking refuge from the Mexican Revolution. During this time, anti-Mexican sentiment had begun to steep and the term marijuana arose as a negative correlation if its use by Mexican immigrants, of its use, I'm sorry, arose negative correlation of its use by Mexican immigrants. Soon after, rumors began to surface, warning Americans of the dangerous and homicidal effects caused by using Mexican cannabis or loco weed, which lead to an even greater rise in the anti-Mexican sentiment. And so the bigotry, the pushing of bigotry, has always been an agenda of the, uh, you know, the faceless whatever. Um, you know, you're better than them, we're better than them. This team, our team, their team, they must die, and a whole crap. Don't fall for it, gang. Let's all work together. As a negative perception of cannabis is intensified, the government began regulating cannabis more aggressively. By 1927, 11 states had passed anti-marijuana laws, by the 1930s, anti-marijuana propaganda and fear, reefer madness was in full swing. And so you can see how the agendas were, were taken over um, back. And, you, you know, the reasoning behind it was so the oligarchies could have a chokehold on it prior to releasing it as a legal, taxable item. And so anyway, you've got the basic fundamentals. Uh, uh, let's get into uh, the confusion presented by hemp versus marijuana. Based on the context used to describe hemp and marijuana, the defining characteristic between the two is based on a single factor, the amount of THC in the plant, which is just what I said prior to all of this rattling and babbling. Eh, I like to keep it simple. Uh, but now you know the, the basic fundament, fundamentals of it. Now, ruderalis, just to be quick about it, is a, a plant that has been uh, altered, and it's not GMO altered, it's just cross-breeding strain of a smaller type of strain. And uh, let's see, hemp versus marijuana composition, the defining characteristic is chemical composition contained within each plant. Both hemp and marijuana can produce high amounts of CBD. The intoxicating cannabis compound, however, THC is produced at very high, at very different levels. While hemp, excuse me, while hemp can contain no more than 0.3 THC dry weight, marijuana can contain up to 30% THC content. All right. Now here you have a little diagrams of a tetrahydrocannabinol and cannabinol, cannabidol, cannabidiol. I want to for me to say. 
However, the legality due to the difference between the THC levels, the hemp and marijuana, uh, so, so essentially, let me simplify this once again. Uh, the more THC it has in it, the more um, benefit it can do to a body, the more illegal it becomes. All right? So let's make that and get that straight and clear. Uh, what the legalities that I'm dealing with predominantly uh, at this point are all of the industrial uses that I have mentioned, all of the machinery that can be um, created from this, and um, how this is done. Now, for me to get into each one of those details, I would have a two to three hour video easily. And I frankly, considering this one will take me four hours to put together a two to three hour video would take me a week <laughs> and I would get so tired of hearing my voice but now as I've been scrolling through this you can actually go ahead and freeze the screen and look at some of these details uh, that are that are important but now I would suggest that we get on with um, the states that are following suit are part of it the uh, the growth and reclamation of some kind of sanity is part of it um, but I think the processing so what I'm not aware of and familiar with enough of is the machines that process for what reasons for plastics and lubricants aside from uh, CBD and the CBD boom now these uh, individuals that uh, process the CBD into oils um, getting to know who all of those people are is uh, part of it the CBD is part of it uh, however I think a huge overlooked part of it is the machinery that needs to be created for the fabrics um, if I if I run up here and I put it in um, you know fabrics growing recreational CBD industry um, I'll just put in fabric industry A B R I C. now this is a I believe relatively untouched to you know whatever degree because of the details of industry when a uh, greater profit can be made marijuana growers diversify with hemp amid CBD boom and the processing uh, machines that need to be built and uh, then the fabrics that are created from those machines and so it's the backside of a lot of these processing details that I haven't considered enough to even know that much about. In the processing end of it, um, many growers are turning to hemp as CBD e extraction explodes. And so this is part of what I am getting into. I will be setting videos out in these directions as well as the other directions you've seen my videos this is an indoor setup pretty cool looking place very simply put together with a lot of pieces um, but does the job uh, police yada yada what be what police police are just cr <laughs> yeah they just got uniforms on and if you're taking their profit you're going to jail because you're you know taking them out of their cut and that's with any cop organization it's just uh, essentially the same as criminal so what is the difference between hemp and marijuana one of the investigations I would like to take a look at and as well as a couple of other details so I'm glad that you joined today's production I'm gonna take a little time to go through this cut it out segmentize it and enjoy some of the information that I find in it. So I hope you do too. Let's get on with it then. And prior to the submission and ending of this, I would like to cover cannabis ruderalis, what a ruderalis is, and uh, little known among consumers, ruderalis cannabis stands apart due to its growing characteristics and signature effects. And ruderalis are crossbred plants. Uh, ruderalis uh, is a little known kind of marijuana that is known for its ability to grow in conditions that would kill most cannabis plants. Ruderalis cannabis originates from Asia and Central Eastern Europe areas uh, with climates too harsh for other cannabis species to survive. And so they will grow in some pretty tough climates and ruderalis seeds are incredibly hardy 
and can continue living even after they've been cracked open uh, or by being stepped on or smashed with a hammer or pummeled into severity or burned or anyway they they're uh, extremely um, hardy seeds and they each ruderalis is a cross breed from one type or another to create a certain effect the name ruderalis comes from the words ruderal or rudera latin terms meaning rubble in english ruderal plants are wild plant species that can flourish in lands that has been disturbed <clears throat> that can flourish in lands that have been disturbed by human activities such as construction they can grow out of cement they can grow out of rocks <laughs> they're extremely hardy hardy crossbred plants and they have these types of effects um, growers will find that a ruderalis plant is the smallest of all cannabis types reaching a height of only one to two and a half feet and i've grown uh, quite a number of ruderalis which i don't have any photographs of but they're cute little stumpers and they're great to, for indoor uh, growing because the weight of the plant doesn't crush the roots for one. Anyway, buds of ruderalis bud is generally smaller than those generated by other types of cannabis plants. Although they're small, they're steady, sturdy, and chunky. Chunky monkey autoflowering characteristics of the cannabis ruderalis plant is truly what sets it apart from sativa and indica species. Autoflower. Unlike the others, which must have their lighting manipulated in order to kick off the flowering process to a 12-12 light-dark cycle, the ruderalis plant, uh, cannabis plants will automatically begin to flower between 21 and 30 days after being planted. You little snipper! And just go ahead and do it anyway. Um, harvest a month or so after it begins flowering, cannabis ruderalis will be ready for the harvest. And so specifically, cannabis ruderalis is typically ready for harvest in 70 to 110 days. In a rotating cycle, that would be every day after the seeds are planted. And so now you get some ideas for the ruderalis. Pure ruderalis uh, isn't a species that will typically be found in a dispensary. So the only, only the people who um, get to experience consuming it are those who grow it themselves. Ruderalis is known for the following effects. Um, now, I haven't particularly, you know, I've verified with my own, um, but not this, definitely not that. But let's see, it says, the extremely low levels of THC, tetra, uh, tetrahydrocannabinol, in cannabis ruderalis means that it doesn't cause psychotropic effects. The fact um, that the species causes so little terms of a high is a part of the reason it's rarely grown as a pure species, as a pure species. Now, crossbred um, with something that has a percentage uh, will be different, of course, naturally. And of course, the UV content and what's in the soil, how much it's uh, washed out at the end of its cycle. All right, the calming and relaxing of a ruderalis um, it has a high CBD, uh, cannabinoidal content, which makes an excellent kind of cannabis for medicinal purposes. It's especially good uh, for medicinal marijuana patients who would like its benefits of CBD without high amounts of THC. And uh, so that is a benefit to, to many, uh, having a higher CBD than THC in it. And now I'm going to have to end this part of the video, but you get the idea of a ruderalis because I have somebody scraping the eighth of an inch of snow off their driveway out the window. Uh, so now you see this, and I'll leave this for a moment, and I am going to go through a lot of this. Thanks for checking this part. So industrial hemp in North Carolina is the newest crop and uh, generating a tremendous amount of money, but the details in dealing with uh, what, how it's produced, where it goes, um, when you stack up the plants and send them to a processing facility, what does that facility look like? What does it create? How much is needed to make, um, you know, a, a cloth, or a quilt for a queen-size bed, let's say, or, you know, a little puppy um, sweater or whatever. So this is what I'm going to be looking into to some degree here and now, and I'm also going to be living out on the farm. I'm moving. I've made arrangements with one of the top 
co-ops in the state of Washington to uh, work with this avenue and direction of information. If I can spread out more information to people that will help them in their lives, that's really what I, you know, the best thing I can do for people, in my opinion. So that's what I'm out to do, and that's what I'm about to do. And so uh, I'll put together a few productions and dealing with these informational details and hopefully it will assist some of you folks out there not just only in knowledge but possibly in your lifestyle and what you do with your property it might help so let's get on to that thanks for joining this particular production and off we go all right finally getting back into a haphazard way of looking at things i just opened up this page from uh, you know from the Google page clicked on it you might say hope I didn't hurt myself now a sustainable future with hemp is what the 10 benefits shown on is are <laughs> Jesus Yoda was my dad dad Yoda my was and so a sustainable future with hemp I don't want to do it in the Captain Kirk voice but if you make me oh I'm sorry that was bones uh, hemp, cannabis, and but not marijuana. Uh, hemp and marijuana are both cannabis plants. They differ in hemp production and history. Now we are going to get into it. <laughs> now we are going to cover an in depth history of the hemp production. And I'm sorry, I don't want to talk like that, but my voice is forcing me to. The eldest fabric remnant is 9,000 year old hemp see now see it last nine thousand years you buy a dress made out of hemp <laughs> you're gonna wear that for a while uh, you could pass it down actually so uh, looking at the marijuana tax act of the in uh, 19,000 years ago I like to just boggle the mind don't I do I industrial hemp is love most hot on hot whoa so let's get down to the nitty-gritty informational details of how hemp can help save the environment. So now you know that. You know, it'll clean up the soil, the automotive industry, the paper products, the building materials, and, and the uh, textiles. Now, of course, you have livestock bedding, beauty, skin products, and hemp and human health. Hemp oil, CBD oils for health. And I don't see any plastic explosives in here. God damn it, Jim. Uh, you know, there are a lot of, I think, there are a lot of uh, missing details in this. No offense, the plant people are the best people in the world. I'd give this guy everything I had if I knew who he was. But in the meantime, uh, forward-thinking people uh, give a rat's ass and look into it, decide what they're going to do about it, and actually get their buns off the uh, couch and do something. And others sit on the couch and watch the ones that do something do it. But you really can't do that unless it's produced in a YouTube video. So stop on down to your local YouTube store and buy some videos. Uh, extra hemp is allowed in most of the country, technically. Oh, I'm sorry. Industrial hemp is allowed in most of the country, typically. The laws in all three states. All right, now let's take a quick look at how hemp can save the environment. And you have uh, regenerative agriculture. And uh, it aims beyond just achieving sustainability by farming and organic methods. It is set a set of farming principles and practices designed to increase biodiversity, enrich soil, and enhance ecosystems. Hemp is well suited for used in regenerative agriculture since the fast growing and quick to mature plants require little water and no pesticides. Actually, uh, hemp is a pesticide. Uh, the Egyptians used to crush it up and then, uh, you know, swim in it or something because it's a pesticide in itself. There's only like one or two bugs that'll eat it, but that's just me babbling. Pull large amounts of, oh, it, so it eats a lot of carbon dioxide from the air and increases the uh, microbial content in the soil. So these are a multitude of details in just the, you know, number one, 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 mwah. So two is soil cleanup. 
through a process called South Hamlin hemp production decontaminates the soil. Cannabis plants absorb contaminants through fast-growing deep roots, which store or even transform toxins into a harmless substance. The plant draws out harmful heavy metals from the soil. For example, a hemp has even been used to decontaminate soil around Chernobyl disaster, thus the best Chernobyl hemp in the world. It's radioactive. Smoking it, you turn into weed man. See, we have uh, automotive, cars with exteriors, made of hemp plastic, and running on hemp biofuel lessen the human impact on the environment. Driving such a vehicle could be nearly five times greener than the conventional automobile. An acre of hemp can produce power equivalent to 1,000 gallons of gasoline. Well, who really cares about that? We don't want to hear that. We want to give all our money to the oligarchies. That's what we want to do. Mm -hmm. So anyway, moments to pause and ponder in the haphazard universe. Uh, you've got paper products. You've got building materials. You can make hempcrete out of it. You can press it into boards that are six times stronger than common two by fours. You can, it grows. I mean, the relative compar comparison between growing a tree and growing a load of hempcrete or a load of hemp two by fours in the time factor. In the, uh, there's just so many factors that are offset and. For the investor, these are important details to consider, and for the producer, it's just a benefit. So, all of the machinery to produce these things is what I'm talking about, what I would like to investigate and promote to you, so that in the industry you've been in, in your life, it will apply, and it will. And if you want to take up something and do it, and make some money with it, and help the environment, and help the people, and help this process, Let's get to it. Who's with me? Now, we've got these details of the non-toxic, and, you know, there are just so many benefits. It's, it's extreme. Fire-resistant, pest-resistant, uh, not government-resistant. You know, government needs to have a chokehold on this stuff before it's properly released. But the machinery you can develop, you can, uh, you know, I mean, hey, we should get on this because the more machinery we have, the more need we have for the item uh, to work with in that machinery. All right. So, um, all right, now that being the first six, let's go to ten quickly and jump backwards. Uh, we have, as you can see, hemp oil CBD. Many people know about this for stress management, anxiety relief, sleep improvement, reduction of pain, and reduction of inflammation. Uh, it has been used and it is used by millions of people now, and that will increase as people, you know, learn the benefits and experience. The benefits, and now we have the super feud, super feud, the Hatfields and the McCoys. Pop in here quite briefly, and of course, this is for anybody in the Kentucky and Hatfield and McCoy range who needs to shoot at their neighbor. Hatfield and McCoy feud, also described by journalists as the Hatfield McCoy War, involved two rural families of the West Virginia, Kentucky area along Tug Fork of the Big Sandy River in the years 1863 to 1891. The Hatfields of the West Virginia were led by William Anderson, Devalancy, Hatfield, while the McCoys of Kentucky River were under the leadership of Randolph Olirani McCoy. Those involved in the feud were uh, descended from Joseph Hatfield and McCoy, born in 1750. And so this is a little bit about the Hatfields and the McCoys. William McCoy, the patriarch of the McCoys, was born in Ireland around 1750, which is quite fascinating. Who knew that? That McCoy, Captain McCoy, um, was born in Ireland. I had no idea. And so this fascinating information can be found here on the Wikipedia page, which I will leave a link to in the description. And thanks for playing. Now, back to weed. I'm sorry, superfood, and uh, hemp seeds are nutritious, um, 
See, I've never actually eaten a handful of, but I mean, if you crunched them up and made bread out of them, um, they have important nutrients, including vitamin E, potassium, calcium, iron, and zinc. And furthering our investigation at the Fine Cooking website, located at a link I will leave in my description, of course, uh, Apple Hemp Quick Bread. Now I'm just going to scroll down here and uh, read a little bit of this and show you the ingredients so that you can freeze frame and make your own Apple Hemp Quick Bread. This moist, sweet loaf cake makes an excellent snack or breakfast, and it stays moist for five to seven days, making it a great gift-giving Christmas gift. Any confirmed texture, relative tart and apple. So anyway, these are the ingredients of, uh, you take unsalted butter and uh, position a rack, center of the oven, um, whip all this stuff up, toss it in there, chomp it down. It's like a good deal. I'm not going to go through all of the names of these things. Of course, then I could help the visually impaired by saying it's got unsalted butter for the pan, which you would, you know, rub on the pan. And you have six and a half ounces, uh, one and a half cups plus two teaspoons. I'm sorry, one and a half cups plus two tablespoons, which equates to six and a half ounces of all-purpose flour. More for the pan. You know, flour the pan that you've buttered sort of thing. You rub butter in the pan, then you put flour in. All right, before you dump your goo in there. And the goo consists of baking powder at one and a half teaspoons, um, three quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon, not tablespoon, teaspoon, all right? Half a teaspoon of ground ginger, half a teaspoon of ground cardamom, and one quarter teaspoon of baking soda. Giving it a little more fluff, I say. A pinch of ground cloves, just a pinch now. Take it easy. And two-thirds cup of granulated sugar. Sukar. Oh, of course, you could that could be replaced with, you know, your healthy sugar. Uh, two large eggs at room temperature. Two teaspoons of finely granulated lemon zest. And three-eighths tablespoon, I'm sorry, teaspoon of table salt. <laughs> tablespoon of tea salt. I don't know. So a half a cup of canola, and who canola that? Oil, with two teaspoons of molasses. And I'd make that granny. Sorry about the smack there. I'd make that granny, um, you know, the Grandma Moses. Unsulfured, but you could use sulfur in that, I suppose. I wouldn't. One large tart apple. Make a tart such as a Granny Smith Pink Lady Honeycrisp uh, Peeled, Cored, and Grated. That's just great. And one and a quarter cups of that, by the way. And then finale is a quarter cup of cracked hemp seeds. Uh, hemp hearts. So uh, cracked, I'm wondering, uh, do you crush that into a powder? Um, let me see here. Position a rack uh, in a medium bowl, whisk it all, and summon a um, large bowl. Add oil, molasses, including silicone. Uh, using a silicone spatula, stir hemp seeds. And uh, so it doesn't look like you crush up the hemp seeds. It doesn't appear to be the case. Um, yeah, so I wanted to show you that. Here's the rest of it at the finale of it. And, of course, it's baked in the oven at 350 degrees uh, right here. And, uh, right. So all of the little details are there. Basically, you whip it up, toss it in the pan, throw it in the uh, oven for this duration of time. Or until a knife or toothpick doesn't stick when you poke it in there. Poke it through, and after it quits sticking, it's done. All right, then back to the end of this essay. Hemp flour made from hemp seeds is gluten-free, just like my episodes, and easily digestible. Grinding hemp seeds with water produces a dairy alternative, hemp milk, and thus you don't have to stress out a cow. Uh, imagine a cow milking your wife, I mean, <clears throat> but that would be a bull. So beauty skin products, of course, now we have the oils and ointments uh, that are being made by, um, you know, for skin lotions. It doesn't clog 
pores. It doesn't cause redness and includes some UV protectant. And for these reasons, hemp seed oil appears in a variety of skin lotions, creams, serums, and treatments. And so there are, once again, my point just going on with what is your avenue, what is your interest, and how does this apply to you in any way. And uh, yeah, it's all coming about. It's all being expanded. And this is the time. The uh, iron is hot strike. Uh, livestock bedding. Used for bedding livestock for horses, chickens, cattle, hemp herds. Um, hemp herds. Well, anyway, the inner stock. Oh, I see. Hemp herds, the inner stock, is longer lasting than traditional straw or wood shavings. Hemp bedding not only is long lasting and very absorbent, but it produces low dust and controls odor and is biodegradable. So there are so many other benefits that people are not um, really familiar with. Of course, we all are familiar, I hope, to some degree with the textiles that can be made from the product itself. And once again, I would like to look into the machinery, what kinds of machines, and the, uh, right, the expanding industry in itself. And so hemp fibers, um, the most durable and versatile of all natural textile fibers, and made, used by the early Egyptians, as you saw earlier, 9,000-year-old items are found. And uh, they hold shape without stretching, are mold-resistant, naturally resistant to UV light, are water-absorbent, and so they retain dye and color better and breathe in warm weather to retain warmth in cooler weather and <laughs> retain so, so there's there's all these benefits now you know the fundamental benefits of the marijuana plant and to get into the finality of this i just wanted to run through some of this let you know what's coming up and going on if you wish, like, comment, and or subscribe. I, I think this would be an excellent forum area, this particular video, for any research that you do, like uh, my guys, Joe Brandenburg and uh, Captain Kirk and other people that leave fantastic links. Let's let this be um, an outsourced channel for informational details to help one another in this expanding and upcoming industry. So like, comment, and subscribe, and I will speak with you very soon. And once again, thanks for playing. Adios, amigos.